Question number one in the name of the Honourable Thank you, Annette Mr King. Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister. Does he stand by all his statements? Right, Honourable Prime Mr. Minister. Speaker. Mr Speaker, yes. Supplementary question, Mr Speaker. Supplementary question, the Honourable Annette In King. the speech from the throne, he stated that his government's plan includes higher incomes for New Zealanders. What percentage wage movement does he envisage would be fair for hard-working Kiwis over the next three years? Right, Mr. Honourable Speaker. Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, one that uh, is in excess of the inflation rate. Supplementary, Supplementary question. question, Honourable Annette King. Well, in light of that, does he think an increase of 70 per cent a year would be fair? Because pay rises of this magnitude have recently been described by the Minister of Finance as just market corrections. Uh, the right Mr. Honourable Speaker, Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I assume the member is talking about um, some of the pay increases that uh, uh, chief executives at um, McSonship model companies have received. I, I, I don't know uh, the. Uh, the, co the composition and makeup of their, the, their pay, uh, but I suspect um, that in fact what's really happened is they haven't had a 70% increase in their salary. They probably had a combination of stock options and, and other uh, parts of their payment, and, and also an incentive payment reflecting the performance of the company. And so actually you do get those kinds of moves, both up and down with chief executives, but that's uh, not something that goes in terms of just their straight salary increase. Supplementary question. Supplementary question, well, Honourable well, how, Annette King. How does the government justify an increase of 70 per cent or $900,000 pay increase for the CEO of Mighty River Power as just a market correction, but a $2 an hour increase in the minimum wage paid to the lowest paid New Zealanders as unaffordable? Mr. Speaker, right, Honourable Prime um, the Minister. government doesn't justify it because the justification is required by the board of directors and the chairman of the company. But, but actually, Mr. Speaker, I haven't done this exercise. But if members opposite want me to, I will go away and have a look at the incentive payments made to other chief executives under the previous Labor government. And I'm pretty sure you will find, Mr. Speaker, that when Meridian, that when Meridian was run by Keith Turner and 16% so, and, and of the company was sold in the form of Southern Hydro, and there was a $1.5 billion proceeds and a $600 million profit. I may be wrong, but I'm pretty sure Keith Turner got a tidy little bonus for doing that. Well, supplementary question, Mr. Speaker. Well, uh, supplementary question, Honourable Annette King. Well, does he stand by his statement that, quote, we prefer that we were a more equal society with less inequality, and if he stands by that, what will he do to ensure the 43% of workers who did not receive a pay increase in the last year get even a fraction of a 70% pay increase the mighty River Power CEO got last year? Uh, Mr. Right, Speaker, Honourable Prime Mr. Minister. Speaker, yes, and I honestly thought we'd dispatch that ridiculous argument when we dispatched David Cunliffe. Um, but if we want to go back and have that argument again, Mr Speaker, uh, the member will know that what she's talking about, unless she's just reading out what the research unit gave her, is the LC is the LCI index, and she will know the LCI index isn't a measurement of the way that these salaries are adjusted. And, Mr Speaker, she will know, because I'm sure she's researched it then, it was absolutely identical under the nine years of a Labor government that 40-odd percent of people under the LCI didn't get a change in their salary. Explaining's losing. Uh, Supplementary right, question, supplement Mr Speaker. Order, order. Supplementary how, question, the Honourable Annie. Well, answer this, Prime Minister. How will a home care worker on $15.20 an hour go about getting a market correction in their pay packet when it's the government that provides the funding through Vote Health and have refused to increase the health, health budget to meet cost pressures, as outlined in the Treasury papers released recently? Mr. Speaker, right, Honourable Prime Mr. Speaker Mr. Uh, members defeating her own argument because this government has increased the health budget every single year we've been in office. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Order, order. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Point of order, Honourable Annick King. Mr. Speaker, I seek leave to table the Treasury papers showing that they only made order. a contribution towards cost pressures in health. Order. Oh. 
I'm going to let the House decide. I'm not sure it will uh, add great information to members, but the House can, can decide. Leave has been sought to, tra uh, to table some Treasury papers. Is there any objection? Yeah. There is none. Order. They can be tabled. Question number two, Petelia Turay.